Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to coverage of high school soccer on Manchester Public Television Services. Tonight, we're in Division Two at William Bill Meisel Veterans Memorial Field on the campus of West High School as the Blue Knights host the Eagles of Kennett in a girls soccer matchup. I'm Peter Capano. It's nice to be here on the 17th of September in 2021 on a relatively warm and humid night. Actually, it's a four o'clock start, so uh, with the overcast, it's already getting dark this time of year a bit early. West defending the goal to our left, Kennett in the away white. West in their home blue. I'll get you the starting lineups in just a moment. Kennett comes into town with a 2-2-2 two, two, and two record. West is without a win in their six games. All right, here comes uh, Marissa Caputo with the ball for Kennett. It's a good forward pass for Isabel Murray, the senior, going down the left flank. She's got a couple options in the middle of the field, but she takes the shot. It comes off the knee of the West goaltender and falls rather kindly for, I think it is number four, Bryn Thiel of Kennett. And they grab a very quick 1-0 lead. So number four in, the, let's call it the second minute. It was uh, failed on the left-hand side, set up by Caputo. It was Brooks down the left-hand side, set up by Caputo. And fail, knocked home the rebound. All right, in goal for Kennett is Samantha Habert Jacques, one of the co-cap tri-captains here. Number two is Kendall Krieger, a sophomore midfielder. Number four is Bryn Fail, the goal scorer, junior. Number five is Katie Brooks, a tri-captain, senior defender. Number six, Marissa Caputo, junior midfielder. Number seven is Isabel Murray, a senior uh, midfielder, I think, today. Plays up top as well. Number eight is Josh, Jocelyn Anzani. Anzaldi, as I pick my head up from the roster here, she's a junior midfielder. Number nine is Ashley Garst Garsdy, a junior defender. Number 10, Carly Krebs, a junior midfielder. Number 13 is Emily Kenny, the other tri-captain, a senior defender. And number 14, Ivy Zip, a sophomore midfielder. And there's another goal. That cross came in and Isabel Murray got to it and just deflected it inside the post. Nice little touch by Isabel that time. And here in the third minute, it's two to nothing. This Kennett team recently played uh, Hollis Brookline, the only uh, common opponent of these two and lost just two to one. Hollis put, put something like eight goals on West. And as a matter of fact, looking at West's schedule, of the f five of their uh, losses came from teams that altogether only have four losses. So a couple of unbeatens, a couple uh, of uh, one loss teams, and, and one with uh, two. Pretty rough schedule to start for the Blue Knights. And beyond that, they're young. so. They've got a long way to go this year, but Coach Rachel Kay, in her second year, is optimistic and uh, happy with their attitude. As we head into the start to get to the midpoint of the season. Kenneth, by the way, is coached by Ron Krieger. All right, West in goal, Kelsey Durham, junior. Number two is Chloe Baudet, a senior. Number three is Braylon Smith, a freshman. 
Number seven, Prashna Gali, a sophomore. Number eight is Olivia Mazowicz, a senior. Number 10 is Ania Poulin, a senior. Number 12 is Sydney LaRue. She's also a senior. Number 13, Navia Spears is a junior. Number 15 is Chloe Murphy, a freshman. Number 16 is Michelle Valley, a sophomore. And number 18, Ashea Lauder is a freshman. So I think there were three freshmen in the starting lineup here tonight for West. All right, we'll get our first corner of the game. Looks like Ivy Zip, Z-I-P-F, is over to take it. Just a sophomore. Looks like she's trying to pick out her teammate, Carly Krebs. West gets it clear. Here's Gali. Prashna, duking and jiving on the left side with Katie Brooks on her. Now she's double teamed and she runs out of real estate. Yeah, we need a ball girl over here. off a little hard and Gali will pick it up. And Brooks puts it up to safety. You can see here we have a eight lane track before any fencing on this field here at West. This, this surface is only three, maybe four years old. It was redone. Uh, recently, now uh, Gill has been redone and Memorial as well. All three of our high school playing surfaces are new uh, field turf surface. Obviously, with all the lines out there, you see the multi use. That's a nice touch by Caputo of the Eagles, knocked ahead by Chloe Murphy. Zip, picking out Krebs. Her pocket is picked, that could have been a foul, there it is. Now Olivia Maswich came through and, and took that ball right off the foot of the Kennett player. And the follow through of the, of the Kennett player's foot tripped her and since she had won the ball, it was a foul. All right, there comes Kennett down the left side. That is going to run a long way. Need a new ball for that one. Uh, Isabel Murray of Kennett is going to track that down. In fact, it's two balls down there. Might as well get the other one too while she's there. And that is very sporting of her as it's not even her throw in. I can see Coach Quay on the sideline for West. She looks like she's trying to recruit somebody to come over here and run the sideline. She may be successful as a couple, couple of young ones getting up. There was some confusion as to which line we we're playing. Again, with the multiple lines, soccer is the most outside line, at least on the uh, sidelines. It's yellow. We're playing yellow lines here for soccer. Is Bodet with the throw into LaRue. Smith gets a touch. The Eagles of Kennett lead two to nothing. Two quick goals in this one. 
on rebounds. And put them on top. Here's Caputo. And give and go, Briggs down. Smith gets it. Taken away by Krieger. She goes outside square. But Enzaldi can't track it down. And here comes Chloe. Two Chloe's starting for West. This happens to be the Bodette. I think they both play outside bats. It's Chloe Murphy on the ball now. As her pocket picked. There's the service in the middle. It's bouncing around. It's loose. Goalie can jump on it, and she does. Durham gets to that one. But West needs to go after those crosses and those loose balls and, and hit them with authority somewhere to safety, away from the front of the goal. Maswick goes out wide. Looks like Lauder on the far side. Last time out, this West team lost to Monadnock three to one. Although if I'm not mistaken, Monadnock is a division three team. Sliced out of play by LaRue. Murphy gets her knee on that one, and LaRue pushes it forward. Garsty, it's out of play. And while I'm thinking about this uh, surface, uh, it's worth noting that this field is a little bit narrow. The, uh, the length of the straightaways here on the track uh, are a bit long, and that made the uh, in field more narrow. Memorials is a little bit wider and, and Gill is very much wider. Full 72 yards, I believe, in width. This one's probably 68 and it may not be that much. Soccer field typically wants to be about 118 yards by 72. They set the uh, goals here in the middle of the end zone. So this field is 110 yards long, which is fine for the high school game. That's good help defense by LaRue. She gets it cleared. West needs to organize. LaRue again, the one-man wrecking gang in there. It's Krebs, pushes it out wide, the zip, zip, kind of zip down the right-hand side. Open substitutions. Can't pick out any numbers from here just yet. Looks like number 11, Elsie Vashon. Maybe 16, Kayla Irwin for Kenneth. And number one, Tunza Katandala, senior for West, number one. This is good work by Maswitz. It's a good job to pick out Valley, but her return pass just leads her a little too far. 
Good idea there. That was the right thing to do. All the way back here to Jacques, and she picks out her teammate very nicely at midfield. Almost hits it too hard, though. It's hard to control. But Kennett has it down the right-hand side. Zip, no doubt, over there. Poulin, defensively. Krebs loses it. Comes back to her. Now it's in the middle. Baudet doesn't get it clear, and it falls for Caputo, I think, who finishes. Pretty sure that's Caputo at this point already in the game. She stands out for me. I'm still waiting to see if I can get the number on her back. Appears to be number six, which indeed is Marissa Caputo in the 15th minute. Makes it three to nothing. step by Poulin. She got it to Murray, but Murray couldn't quite control it. Now it falls back again for West. Here's a three on three. That falls slid inside for Mazowitz. Just a little overcooked. Good idea. Olivia had a lane there. Needed to make that diagonal run. The idea of the pass was very good. Just difficult to put that with the right pace. And it was picked up by the keeper. Here comes Kenneth, that's blocked. And this is a decent clear. And West gets it all the way down. Madsworth is running. A little hesitation by Jacques to keep her that time, and she almost paid for it. Smith is trying to track that down. I don't have a number four on my roster for West. She made the clear down at the other end to start that counterattack. There she is again. Murphy battling it. Well intercepted. Here's a counterattack opportunity. Can't get it between the defenders, but it deflects there. Mazowitz lays it off to Smith. Braylon puts it towards goal. That was good effort by the Blue Knights. They didn't just try to jam it forward. I think it was Mazowitz who recognized that uh, Braylon Smith, the freshman, had some room behind her and laid it very nicely to her. Smith's shot wasn't gonna beat Jacques, but uh, it was well-crafted. Here's Krebs. She'll earn her team a corner. It'll be Krebs to take it. Scoreboard only has two goals up for Kennett. I'm not quite sure I saw three. Right. 
Elsie Vashon pushes it forward. A little through ball. Good run. And a decent goal, too. A little combination work in the penalty area. Results in a left-footed offering. Again, I'm uh, watching for a number. Looks like number three, Haley Burke. After a couple of passes to set her up, all she had to do was put her left foot on it and redirect it into the corner. Very nicely done. 19th minute. Here's an opportunity for Wes. Crush Nagali found herself with an open look about 15 yards out. She was closed down pretty quickly and her shot ended up in the lap of uh, Samantha Jacques. But that's what Wes needs right here is a, a goal, a little shot of uh, jolt of energy. They're having a hard time defending inside their penalty area. That's well, that's well done though. Sydney LaRue uses her size and shoulder to shoulder charge. Nothing wrong with that. Push it out here to Valley. Valley picks out Mazowitz. Olivia's looking around. She's got a pass in between those two. Yeah, it gets there and now it comes back to Olivia. She's working up with front with Galley. That ball from Valley was intended for Galley, and Galley this time is offside, unfortunately. Well worked by West. She wasn't off by much. Yeah, referee's got his hand up. He eventually did blow the whistle. I think he waited to see if the defender was going to get the ball or the winger was going to take it towards goal. And once the winger won it, he blew the whistle. If the defender had won it and either and played it to her advantage, he'd have let the offside go just so the game can continue to flow. It's good refereeing. Hampshire High School uses a two-man refereeing in part, in large part, because there aren't enough referees to go with the three-man, which would have uh, two assistants and one in the middle. Can't say that I'm a big fan. Uh-oh, here we go down the right-hand side. Good work that time by Poulin to put a little body on the opponent. I think it was fail. And that just threw her off enough so that she touched it out of bounds. Durham will take the goal kick. We're past the halfway point of this first half. The scoreboard reads three to nothing. I, I still think the ball went in the net four times. But maybe one of them was called back. I'll get that straightened out at halftime, ladies and gentlemen. Down the right-hand side, Haley Burke. And over comes Poulin to knock it to safety. Six players and the thrower. An attack. Looks like Anzaldi now with the ball for Kennett. The fluorescent green shoes. She shoots it. Well struck, but right at Durham. She knocked it down and grabbed it before it could be 
put into her net. Good work by Kelsey. That's well done by Sydney. LaRue picks out Mazowitz. Running on the outside is Lauder. Lauder turns the corner. He's still going. I think he's going to get a throw out of that. Yes. Shea, just a freshman. There are five freshmen, freshmen on this uh, West team. And that'll get West their first corner kick, won't it? The referees seem to point in a, towards me in an odd direction. Uh, but the players know they're always lining up for a goal kick. And look at uh, Chloe Baudet's going to have to go halfway up the parking lot to get the ball. That is a senior. It's in the mix. Can Wes get a foot to it? Yes. Oh, it fell pretty nicely to LaRue, who poked it forward, and then Golly got a touch on it. But once again, it was aimed straight at Jacques. We're going to go pick out one of those posts and knock it in. Pudo with some nice touches. She really collects the ball very well. Keeps her head up. Here she gets it back. She gets her second goal too. She, she pushed it to the outside out to uh, Ivy Ziff and just kept her run going right into the box and Ziff just picked her out and right in stride. It is Marissa Caputo, the junior, drops another one in. in the 25th minute. That's well won by Sydney LaRue. And it's also well won by Emily Kenny. She gets it clear, pays the price by getting knocked over, but the advantage is to cut it, so we'll keep playing. Caputo wins it. That went out of play on Anzaldi. And here comes Baudet to grab the throw. 14 minutes left in the first half. Baudet battling with two Eagles. Wins his Krebs. Undercuts that, but it falls for Caputo. She finally tames it well enough to knock it to the outside. And it looks like it's uh, Ziff over there, number 14. <laughs> well, that time the, the West defender uh, outran her opponents and got to the ball, but what she did was to stop the ball didn't want to kick it out over the end line for a corner. And she just stopped it and took her a couple steps to change direction and come back for it. Uh, 
but all that did was allow the Kenneth players who, who were beaten to it to pick it up and put it in front of goal. The save was made though by Kelsey Durham. This is Krebs. Nia Poulin battling down there for West. Uh-oh. That fell nicely for Zip, and she's got one of her own. The first game for this year was the Memorial Boys versus the Timberlane team and the Owls, I guess, and uh, Memorial grabbed a 7 to nothing lead at halftime. And it ended that way, too. Credit to uh, Memorial and Coach Gerald White for working on a few things and not, not going to goal, really, in the second half. Like Murphy's coming back on for West. That's a good clearance. It finds Lauder. Lauder goes square. Kenneth still in attack mode. That one is cut out by Durham, though, as Isabel Murray was the intended target. Nice punt. That'll bounce. LaRue. Yeah, it looks like Coach Quay's gonna get a touch. Speaking to her before the game, uh, I asked her about her playing history. She's a Massachusetts girl, played in, in high school and then for four years up at uh, Colby Sawyer in New, Lo New London. Chloe Murphy with a back to goal. Does enough on that back heel to knock it off of uh, Kendall Krieger for the throw. But wait a minute, I guess we got, we got a foul, some violation. I'm not sure what it was. Referees do not have their hands up over their heads indicating an indirect kick, so probably wasn't offside. Maybe a handball that couldn't be spotted from this distance. We get eight minutes till halftime. Kennett with a commanding 
five to nothing or six to nothing, depending on if you believe the scoreboard or my clipboard. played back to Durham. She gets her foot to it. Krebs, though, will put it back towards her and the rebound, she must be offside. Oh, the referee didn't indicate anything and Kelsey was agile enough to dive on that one and stop the rebounds, but rebounds have been a problem for West. Kelsey is a junior. Caputo, look at the touch on that. I wonder if uh, Kenneth plays on an artificial surface like this one, because Caputo seems to understand how, just how fast it is. She just barely touched that ball that time. That's a good job by Braylon Smith to get out of trouble. Um, on grass, the ball wouldn't have gone anywhere, but it was just right on that circumstance. All right, here comes number 18, Olivia Scott, the sophomore defender for Kennett. Caputo doesn't get much wrong. Mazowitz comes back, knocks it off of Krebs for the goal kick. Is Murray twisting and turning. She overhits that pass to uh, Enzaldi. gets it clear and she'll get it again gonna go up in between the defenders this could be a foot race they, neither one of them want to get in the collision that time as with and Jacques the goalie so they both just kind of got through safely and neither one of them touched the ball oh here's an opportunity potentially the referee put his Hand up, his whistle up into his mouth. Maybe I uh, was going to give Lauder a free kick on that, but I think he recognized that uh, the defender did get the ball, knocked it to safety. Lauder's limping a little bit. And she'll come off. She can get there. Ashea, just a freshman. Referees have the time now on the field. Referees always have the time on the field, but the clock has stopped on the scoreboard in accordance with NHIAA protocol. Why, I can't tell you. Of course, in the professional leagues, clock counts up and it just keeps going once it hits the 45 minute mark or 40 minute mark whatever 
And the referee blows the whistle when he or she is uh, ready to say it's over, having added some time for injuries and whatever else, chasing the ball halfway to CMC sometimes here at West Memorial. Of course, in the college game, they count down. The referee will have the uh, timer stop the clock when times uh, when it should be. And so it, it actually is counted down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. I think I'd rather see the uh, clock just continue to run and let the referees blow the whistle. the whistle <laughs> he, he blew it right in one of the right as one of the west players went beside him that was the loudest whistle of the whole half by far <laughs> you can see her put her hands up to her ears <laughs> but that ends the first half uh yeah now the the uh school boy indeed says six to nothing as i have it six to nothing kenneth in command here against West on Friday Night Soccer. I'll be right back. We're just about to have the kickoff for the second half here at uh, William Bill Meisel's Veterans Memorial Field on the campus of West High School. Kennett in command, six to nothing after 40 minutes. West is, uh, of course, in their home blue. At this point, I'm sure that uh, Coach Quay told his uh, Chargers at halftime that uh, set, set that first half aside, let's go win the second half, even if it's one to nothing. You, you, uh, same situation as a couple of weeks ago when uh, I was at Memorial. When the boys are out ahead of Timberlane, seven to nothing at halftime. But uh, this West team apparently has no problem keeping their chin up. They they keep on playing. They they like each other, and uh, they feel like they're learning together, according to uh, Rachel, their, their coach. And uh, and that's great. That's really what this is all about, anyway. It's just part of the uh, education, part of the experience of high school. And uh, sometimes I, I feel a little bad for, especially high school kids who pretty much lost a year of, uh, socially lost a year of school as the COVID caused all the shutdown. I'm quite sure I would not have liked it at all, learning via computer at home. COVID remains a problem, and something that is being dealt with is my favorite player, Marissa Caputo. She lays it over to the left. Good defensive step by Poulin. There's the shot, that one gets through. I think it came in uh, from Isabel Murray, number seven. So in the 43rd minute, we get another one. I thought that uh, Poulin had broken that play up after Caputo slipped it down to Murray. But it uh, once again bounced fairly kindly for Kennett and then snuck in behind Kelsey Durham in goal. Well, I was thinking of, about uh, COVID as Braylon Smith pulls it back out for Maswitz. And now LaRue, because uh, both the Memorial football team and the Central football team have had some COVID positives and both are on 10 day 
uh, no play, which in will include the day they were supposed to play each other, which is a real shame because the intra-city games are very important culturally, if you will. All right, here's the cross in from Ivy, Ivy Ziff, and Dunham gathers that one. I should say Durham. Durham as in UNH. Next week on the 23rd, a uh, Thursday, the Memorial Central soccer games will be played uh, simultaneously, girls at Memorial and boys at Gill. Here's another interesting ball into the mix. That one's tracked down by Chloe Baudet. This is good from West, a little counterattack action, trying to work it up top. They look, they look decent up top. They look a little bit dangerous. And that was, uh, golly, she had Mazowitz on the left-hand side, wide open. Didn't know it, either, either Mazowitz wasn't able to yell loud enough or golly didn't pick her head up. She was in traffic, so she really needed to control that ball. But that was a missed opportunity. It's, Olivia made the nice run on the left-hand side. That one's knocked into the mix. Jax will go up and catch it like a goalie should. Got her hands well up over her head. A lot higher than anyone could have jumped up and headed it. That came off of Murphy. She, she was waiting for the referee to blow. Blow the whistle on a handball. She's chatting with him now about it. Uh, he didn't bother because I think he met, saw that it was completely unintentional. Sometimes I just want to be right there on the sidelines so I can hear the, the players talk, hear the referees talk to the players. Murphy does a good job there to knock it out of play. Kennett sending uh, Garsdy up from her defensive position, pulling uh, Krieger back. They're stacked. Krieger now moves forward. Six in the box. Makes me wonder if Coach Krieger talked to his team about how to play this, this second half. I mean, how many goals is, is gonna be enough? Does he have some things he wants to work on? And, and maybe that set play right there on the, on the corner kick was one of them. Uh, or does he wanna maybe try to uh, work on his team's ability to possess the ball, make their opponents chase, play back a fair amount? See, there we go. Brooks knocks it forward to Murray. Baudet battling, clears, skips away from Caputo. That's the first off touch I've seen from her all day. LaRue, got a lot of company. But the Eagles uh, could work on their, their positioning maybe. They could work uh, playing through midfield. They could work on possessing the ball. Like right here, uh, Kenny is, is pushing hard on that left-hand side where she had an easy pass backwards. That ball could have been swung around and attacked from the other side. But here she is, still on it, still going forward. Durham bobbles that one too. It'll go out for a goal kick. 
Guess who was kicked out of her hand? Durham rolls it. Durham gobbles that one up. She was right there on her near post. Took any angle away from the Kennett shooter. Actually caught that on her knees. That's a nice step. I don't, still don't have a four on my roster though for West. Coach Quay tells me that uh, her numbers were down again this year. This is the only girls team that is being fielded at West this year. That explains why they're at, at first there were six freshmen on this team, now there's five. Murphy gets a touch. Maswitz knocks it to safety. There hasn't been a lot of success so far this year on the girls' side in the city. Now Central is uh, sitting at one and five, and Memorial is 06 and one. So a ref go on the female side this year, pretty unusual. One of these three teams usually leads their division. I am worried that uh, more and more girls from the surrounding towns that could go to Central, that could go to Memorial in particular, are choosing other schools. And there's a goal. I think it's uh, Murray. That would be her third. It would be a hat trick for Isabel, the senior midfielder. Two here in the second half. The 51st minute. It looks as though, as I look at the uh, bench for the Eagles, they, it looks like there may be as many as seven over there who could play. Uh, obviously, Coach Krieger. Could uh, let some of the players that don't get so many minutes uh, onto the field. Although, as I look at them, even from here, I recognize that they did play in the first half. But with Memorial and Central getting together on Thursday the 23rd, we will be at Gill Stadium for the boys game. Uh, the, the boys side is uh, very different from the, from the girls as far as the records go so far. Central is at six and one, Memorial is at five and one. I think Memorial lost to Londonderry Londonderry lost to uh, Nashua South. Central lost to Nashua South, and Nashua South sits on top of the division at 7-0 right now. Londonderry also at 5-1. That is Chloe Murphy. Down towards the end line. A clearance by Guardsy, but only as far as uh, Hayden McNamara, number 20, on for the Blue Knights. The West Boys uh, are also looking for their first win. They're 0-4, but those, again, it was a very tough schedule to, to begin the year. Those four teams that uh, they lost to, between them only have three losses. There's a shot towards goal. LaRue just let her rip. Why not? Maybe she'll do it again. Kind of got under that one and Jacques tracks it down. With the departure of some uh, 
some seniors that the West Boys team may be in a rebuilding year. Falardo, Carson Falardo in particular, I'm thinking of. And I'm sure Tom Bazoyan, the football coach, is sad to see him go too. He, he was the leading scorer and the best player on the soccer team, Mr. Falardo was. And he kicked for the football team. He was their place kicker. Boom. <laughs> Prashnagali came in with a, a little extra shoulder to shoulder. The referee, sorry. Referee today, Chris Morgan is one. I don't know who the other one is. Although they look like twins, look like brothers. I'm sure you can't see it at home, but the referees have uh, microphones and, and earpieces and they can talk to each other during the game. That is a very nice touch, a, a good idea for referees to be able to do that. They may be talking about where they're going to have a bite to eat after the game, though. Ooh. That one was hit hard, and it came off the side of the head of Sydney LaRue. She's still holding her, put her hand to her head and the referee's going to stop the play. Head injuries are, uh, are ones that will stop the play. I think she's fine. Although the referees will check her out real quick. They'll call on medical help if they think it's necessary, but it doesn't look like that's the case. That was just a classic case of uh, getting conked by your teammate on her clearance. That all started with a shot in from, uh, I think it was Sinat of Kennett. And that shot should have just been allowed to go through to Durham. Durham should have called it, said, leave it alone. And Sinat can't track that one down. Instead, uh, Poulin played it without any other information from her keeper. She didn't want to let it go, and, and I don't blame her for that. But her, her clear was deflected, and then the ball bounced around, and then the, the clearance ended up uh, hitting uh, LaRue. But really, the whole thing should have just rolled to uh, Durham. And she could pick it up, get every, everybody out away from her goal, and punt it up the field, or however she wanted to restart. All right, here's LaRue poked away from her by uh, Kenny. And here's Murray. Murray with the hat trick. Krebs. That's the keeper's ball, but she's not going to come get it. But that's just fine, because Ania Poulin can escort it over the end line. Tuesday the 21st features the Central Boys hosting Londonderry. And again, the Londonderry team is at five and one. So that should be a good one. Just two days in front of the Memorial game. We're hoping to get to Gill Stadium for both of those, but we are definitely scheduled for the 23rd. The Intra-city matchup with the Little Green and the Crusaders. Maybe one day, one year, the NHIA will, will set it up like they have done basketball recently where the uh, varsity girls and the varsity boys play in either order. It doesn't matter to me, but back to back at the same setting. And then we could do both the boys and the girls games. 
Always fun. All right, Golly's way offside. Just, just way offside. She can't be passed to. Now she's back on. LaRue recognized that and didn't make the pass through. Smart play by Sydney. Murphy gets a touch to LaRue. She can push it through now and does. Picks out Galley. She's got Maswick's on the other side. Needed that square ball once again. Oh my goodness, Prashna needs to pick that chin up. And if I'm Olivia Maswick, I'm learning how to yell louder because she is wide open on this side. It seems to happen that as uh, Galley gets that ball, she draws both defenders, and that makes it difficult on her. Uh, certainly recognize that. But when both defenders come over, that leaves Olivia wide open. We get to the midpoint here in the second half. Can it? Ooh, that one spilled. And Masowicz almost was able to deflect it in. As uh, Samantha Jacques didn't handle that one cleanly at all. Now that I see her a little closer, she's got a brace on her right, right knee, does Ms. Jacques. LaRue, nice turn. She's going to have to do it again. And in between defenders, well done. Smith can't get to it before Jacques. A nice step by West. I think that's uh, LaRue yet again. She's got two on her, trying to find her way through. She gets enough room to poke it through. Smith isn't going to be able to track that down. She might have been offside. Hard to tell for sure from here. up in the air, Jacques handles it well. Let's see if she can punt. Yes, she can. Not bad. She must have been offside. The referee is not blowing the whistle. Durham comes out, rightly so, to uh, cut down the angle, but Katie Brooks is able to pick out the right-hand side corner. And there's a ninth on the board in the 62nd minute. There's 18 minutes left in this one. It was a tough angle. I thought that uh, Brooks was probably offside. I looked at the referee. It seemed like he was putting his hand to his mouth as if to uh, put a whistle up there, but he didn't blow it. And the goal was the result. That's a nice ball. Trying to pick out uh, Olivia. Maswick has worked hard. LaRue's had a good game in midfield here. It's Valley now, pushing and shoving a little bit. Why not? This is Murphy. Murphy's had a, a lot of trouble down that right-hand side. It's a lot of attacks. Kennett seems to like that right-hand side. Murphy's just a freshman, though. Picking on the underclassmen. 
There is one freshman on the Kennett roster. I'm not sure we've seen her, number three, Haley Burke. You can see, you can tell by the way uh, a lot of the defenders, especially for West, uh, go to strike the ball. That they haven't played the game for too very long. They kind of stab at it. And, and they're trying to hit it with their laces. If you're stabbing, you're almost better off putting your toe right on it. But it, it's not a, it's not a s real swing of the foot. It, it's more just kind of stabbing at the ball. And you can, you can tell. Uh, and see, see Murphy hit that with her instep. That was well done. And so was that. Well, she didn't hit it well, but she struck it well. That's the freshman, Braylon Smith. Well, that's going to go in, too. Again, from here, there's a suspicion of offside. There's no way I could see that from here. Referee was pretty well positioned. Not sure who put it in. Might have been number 16, Kayla Irwin. Certainly seems to me that uh, Coach Krieger should figure out a way to slow his own team down. As that is 10 goals here. Under 15 minutes to go. Murphy gets to it. Now Valley. See right here, this doesn't need to be full board to the goal. Emily Kenny. Durham comes out, it's off the post. Durham did enough that time to push the ball out wide, Durham comes out limping a little bit, but it looks like she's gonna be able to walk it off. Good work that time by Kelsey. She bravely came out to the ball, did what she had to do as uh, Emily Kenny, one of the tri-captains, was coming full board towards goal. Number 10, Carly Krebs back on. That's not exactly taking your foot off the pedal. Krebs was, uh, had a strong first half, especially uh, attacking down that right-hand side with zips. would note that uh, Marissa Caputo looks like she's playing the left back position. She was a forward midfielder through much of the first half and uh, I was impressed with her game. So there's a change that the coaches made. This Kennett team got here at 2-2-2 two, two, by tying Conval and Sanborn 1-1, one, one, both games. They beat Plymouth 5 to nothing, and they beat Berlin 6-1. to one. They lost to uh, Hollis Brookline. Well, this jailbreak here, three on one. It gets to Emily Kenny. She rolls it wide of the goal. 
and they beat Plymouth. Oh, they lost to Hallsbrook on two to one. They lost to Pelham three to two. So they'll move to three, two, and two with this double digit lead. Looks like a low scoring football game up on the scoreboard at 10 to nothing. Well cleared safely by Ania Poulin that time. And there's Caputo now on the right hand side. Well won by Krebs. She's hungry, but she runs out of real estate. It'll be a goal kick as we head towards the 10 minute mark. From uh, Bill Meisel Veterans Memorial Field here at West High School. T 17th of September. Krebs swinging a miss. Pretty soon I'll be complaining it's cold up here. Krebs, she's got Anzaldi on the right, goes there. Good defensive instinct. That time, yeah, that's Ania Poulin. Poulin read that just right as uh, Anzaldi pushed that a little bit too far in front of her, and Poulin recognized that she could round her and knock it away. And that's what she did. So we're under nine minutes now. Katie Brooks will inbound. Krebs has got some wheels on her. She's quick. Gets up to speed quickly. Substitution for West. That is the freshman, Shea Lauder. The amazing hair. Defensive work by Michelle Valley of West that time. Uh, 
abs with the left foot. Not a bad effort. Germs all over it though. Here we go. Durham stops that one. Kenny's toed shot. Durham was helped by uh, Poulin's defense that time. It just kind of rode uh, her, Kenny off the ball just a little bit so that she couldn't make great contact with it. Grabs, here she comes again. Uh-oh, that one got loose. And it's dumped in by Kenneth for an 11th goal. We're inside of uh, six minutes in this one. I'm still trying to pick out the number. She heads back towards midfield. I don't think it was uh, five. I think it was the defender. 13, was it uh, Kenny? Might have been. Golly now. It would be nice for West to pick up a consolation goal in this one as we have five minutes left. This West team is at Sanborn and at Stevens next week. And also, actually, they play three times. They go to Sohegan on Saturday. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday schedule next week for the Blue Knights, the girls. Kind of looks like a double header on Saturday at Sohegan. The boys play at 10, the girls play at 11.30. Schedule will be getting easier for them. And they already showed in a you know, three to one loss to Monadnock that uh, there are teams they can play with out there. Kennett was good today, no doubt about it. They looked especially dangerous going down the right hand side. And Marissa Caputo kind of controlled the midfield. She looked very good. My favorite player today. And not just because my name's Capano, Caputo. Showed me a lot of skill out there today and a good knowledge of the game. It's Haley Burke. Gets a foot to one. Doesn't trouble Durham. Number 17 on the field, another freshman for West, Nina LaPierre. It's on the far side, up top. We just got a couple minutes left in this one. West will fall to 0-7 so far on the year. Again, Kennett will pick up their third win, along with a couple of ties and a couple of losses. It's 
That's well won by Maswich. She's had her moments tonight. She went to foul there. Maybe should have got it. Olivia may be a little frustrated with uh, the number of times, a couple of times where she was wide open on that left-hand side and didn't get the pass through. This is onside, though. This is Lauder, I believe. Did she get a corner? No. Going to bring in some subs, but uh, there's only about 45 seconds according to the time that I stopped or started my watch on my clock on my phone so I'll get ready to sign off ladies and gentlemen I'm Peter Papano hope you enjoyed this division two girls soccer game from West High School Kenneth right from the start they scored in the second minute in the third minute a couple more times in the 15th and 17th and uh, we're never troubled by the Blue Knights here tonight. But Coach uh, Rachel Quay has a work in progress and we will keep an eye on her Blue Knights as the year goes along. Maybe there's a matchup towards the end of the year that will uh, be worth coming back. But uh, for now, Let's call it a night from West High School. Again, I'm Peter Capano. We'll see you next time on Manchester Public Television Services Game of the Week.